Welcome to what might just be my favorite topic in all of cybersecurity, and that is social engineering. I love social engineering so much, but what exactly is it? It is the exploitation of human emotions and interactions to extract valuable information. Now, this is the cybersecurity definition of social engineering because social engineering isn't just unique to cybersecurity. So, so social engineering is everywhere. It's in negotiation, okay, where you have one or two people trying to negotiate. One side may try to appear to have more leverage and try to convince the other side that, hey, we have more leverage, so you should listen to our own terms. That's also social engineering. You have con men, fraud stars that try to do people, that try to trick people into doing things that they normally would not do. That's because of social engineering. Social engineering also occurs in relationships and it's everywhere. In fact, have you seen this movie called Catch Me If You Can, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks? It's a pretty old movie, came, back, came out, I believe, back in 2000 or something like that. Um, it's actually the true life story of a character called uh, Frank Abagnale Jr. If you haven't seen the movie, it's it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, Frank Abagnale Jr., played by Leonardo DiCaprio, he successfully impersonated uh, a doctor, a lawyer, and also uh, an airline pilot as well. And the thing is, he wasn't even 20 years old. I believe he was like 18 or 19. And yet, because he was a master social engineer, he successfully appeared to be a lawyer, a doctor, uh, and an airline pilot as well. If you haven't seen the movie, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. I highly recommend you watch the movie. And I believe Frank Abagnale Jr. ended up working for... It's a little bit of a spoiler, but um, in real life, he actually ended up working for the FBI and helping them in their uh, fraud department. Anyway, you should check out the movie. It's very, very interesting. Now, going back to the cybersecurity are part of social engineering. It is more dangerous than traditional methods of hacking as it relies on human error, which is subjective and less predictable than software or hardware vulnerabilities. So here's the thing, okay? If you're a security analyst or you know, you're in charge of the security of your company, when you're working with software and hardware, you know what you're getting, right? Software is predictable, hardware is predictable. You know if you're getting the best firewalls, the best anti-malware, you know you're going to get the best results. But when you're dealing with human beings, human beings are not software. We're not hardware. We might be predictable in certain aspects of our life, but in general, we're nowhere near as predictable as a software or a hardware. And this is the most dangerous aspect of social engineering because it doesn't matter how much training employees get. Social engineering, especially if it's being conducted by a very good social engineer, there is still a high chance or a high probability that they might end up falling victim. So it is a very, very, very uh, dangerous form of attack. Now, there are five main tactics associated with social engineering. You have baiting, pretexting, quid quo pro, phishing, and vision. What exactly are these? Baiting, trying to lure the target to taking an unfavorable action. The social engineer tries to bait the victim. So you have use of links in emails, which is phishing. We'll talk about that a bit later. Dropping infected USB drives in strategic locations. Let me talk a little bit briefly about this because it's very, very, very common. Imagine you're walking out of your office and you're in the car park and then you see a USB drive on the floor. What would you do? There is a very good chance you may become curious and you'll be like, hmm, this is a USB drive. I wonder what's in it, you know? <laughs> and you end up picking the USB drive, you take it back to your office, you plug the USB drive into your computer and you end up infecting your entire network. It's happened before in real life. Don't think... This is all made up. It actually happens. So that is baiting as well. Maybe the hacker will deliberately drop infected USB drives around the employees of the company he's trying to hack. So it relies on the curiosity kills the cat. You know, when you, when you become curious, oh, I wonder what's in this USB drive or what's in this CD and I want to check what's inside and then you end up uh, infecting yourself. So that's basically baiting. But then we've got pretexting, 
very, very powerful. Looking, acting, or sounding the part relies on conviction and trust. Let me ask you another question, right? Imagine if somebody walked up to you wearing the t-shirt of your telecommunications uh, provider. Let's say, for example, you have a contract with AT&T. And this person walks up to you wearing an AT&T shirt and they tell you that, oh, hi, my name is John. I work with AT&T. Just by looking at the t-shirt, by default, you would begin to believe that they do indeed work for AT&T. Never mind the probability that they might have bought the t-shirt on Amazon or on eBay or wherever. Who knows? But, but your default method of thinking would be, oh, he sounds the part. He looks the part. I mean, he's wearing a t-shirt from AT&T, so he must be from AT&T. Most people will think like that. And you might think like that unless, of course, you're naturally, you're naturally very uh, paranoid, okay? But that's pretexting. When you look, act, and sound the part. Now, quid pro quo. Often a service in exchange for information. An example would be a contractor working on a project in a company while asking the employees innocent questions. This also happened before in real life where a hacker who wanted to take down the company actually ended up getting a job, a contract for them, for him or whether he's one company that he worked for. So his company sent, they sent him to go and do the job for this company that he actually wanted to hack. So while he was in the building, working on the computers, he started asking innocent questions, asking the employee like, hey, you know, how much do you get paid? I'm also looking to come and work here. What's, you know, what's what's life like here? Are you guys getting paid well? Oh, I see, oh, I see. Mm-hmm. How often do you have to run security updates? And, uh, you know, how often do you have to change your passwords? And now you might be thinking, come on, it should be pretty obvious that these aren't normal questions. But the thing is, If a social engineer is very good, they're master psychologists, they know when to ask questions, how to ask them, you being the victim, you would not even realize that you're giving away such valuable information. So that's quid pro quo. Now, Kevin Mitnick. This would be the, this man would be the Michael Jordan of uh, cybersecurity related social engineering because this guy, when he was much younger, he was a social engineer. He was able to gain access to very, very important information, very, very important data through social engineering. In fact, he is regarded by many, including myself, as being one of the greatest hackers of all time. And it's not because he's, he was really good at technical aspects of cybersecurity, like cracking passwords or things like that. No, it's because he was a master social engineer. If you're interested, I would highly recommend you check out his books. He's written books about his life as a social engineer. Very, very, very entertaining. And my hats off to Kevin Mitnick. This guy was a genius when it comes to social engineering. Now, the last two, fishing, relies on creating a sense of excitement or panic in the target using emails. We'll talk about phishing in the next video. And then we also have vision where instead of using emails, you use a phone call. Again, we'll talk about vision as well uh, in the very next video. Before I round up this video on social engineering, I wanted to play you a very, very popular clip on YouTube. Uh, It's called Hack Attack Vision. It has been taken down a few times before. So if you don't find the video through this particular uh, title, just search for vision attack or female vision attack you will see the video pop up. So in this video, uh, you actually have social engineers who are able to lock out a man from his uh, uh, telecommunications mobile account. Uh, It's right here, it says, using Vision, the social engineers call his cellular provider support desk, and with a pretty basic tool set, were able to gain access to his complete mobile account, locking him out in the process, all right? So, this is the female engineer right here, this, this social engineer, and she's telling this, this man that, hey, uh, I'm going to lock you out of your own account. Uh, this, is the, this is the guy right here. And of course, the guy says, it's not possible. I trust my cellular provider. They've got experts and, you know, they're not going to give you my password, things like that. And uh, what she ends up doing, uh, you know, she calls the support 
and of course you know she pretends to have a baby she's got the baby crying sounds playing in the background and she talks about how you know her family is going through tough times and they've just applied for a loan and basically she's able to fool the support analyst into allowing her to log in to this man's account and she was able to even lock him out by changing the password and she got access to personal information as well such as his social security number and some other uh, information so it's a very 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 interesting video but it shows you how she was able to exploit human emotions now there is a very good chance that the support analyst that she was able to fool would have gotten some form of training for social engineering but because you know she had a baby and she was crying and you know the person felt pity on her and ended up falling victim to the social engineering tactic so it's a very very popular video but this happens all the time so if you're watching this video and you are customer support or you're in a job role where you have to talk to people be very very careful okay i know as a human being you might want to be logical and not act like a robot and apply some common sense in certain kinds of situations but be very, very careful. There are social engineers out there who are really good at what they do. And uh, you might be surprised at what you end up uh, doing just because they were able to fool you. So that's it for social engineering. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one.